Miscarriage and infertility. Millions of women experience it, but it's difficult to discuss openly and honestly. Today, a candid conversation about both. I'll be sitting down with two of the three sisters collectively known for their blog, Forever Freckled, to discuss these sensitive and emotional topics. Later, we'll learn more about early pregnancy loss from OBGYN Dr. Cohen, plus one patient's emotional story. I'm Erica Vitrini. Access Health starts now. Studies have shown anywhere from 10 to 25 percent of all clinically recognized pregnancies will end in miscarriage. Although many women experience it, it can still be devastating to process, but hopefully the more candid we are, the less alone we will feel. It's important to keep the conversation alive, so I invited our freckled sisters to discuss not only miscarriage, but infertility and postpartum depression. We're going to talk about a topic that I think is sensitive and sometimes a little too hush-hush, infertility. Yep. Um, I, I personally, uh, I wouldn't say I didn't struggle. I had some bumps in the road, but nothing major. But all of my best friends, a lot of my family members struggled with infertility. Mm -hmm. Did you guys struggle at all? We did. We were twins, actually, um, and we both had trouble getting having children. For me, I was able to get pregnant very easily, um, but I wasn't able to keep the pregnancy. So I had my son, and in between my son and my daughter, I actually had uh, three early pregnancy losses. I actually had trouble getting pregnant, so it was really challenging for me because um, I just wasn't getting pregnant. So I went through a lot of fertility treatments and IUI until I had uh, all three of my children. So. I, don't know, I think as a 20, the 20 year old version of myself mm -hmm. thought this is the way that it goes. Right? Well, I don't even pregnant. think about it. Boom. Boom. Yeah. I have a family. Now I'm it's my turn and I'm yep. ready. I'm ready. Yep. Yeah, exactly. Um, but it doesn't work that way. So emotionally, yeah. how did you feel, Allison? What did, how did that affect you? Yeah, so for me, I. I had a really hard time with it because um, I'm a very planned personality type A and everything kind of goes by my schedule and when I was finally ready to have my family, I, I wasn't able to get pregnant on my time frame. Mm -hmm. um, so that was really challenging for me to just kind of have to adapt to that. Um, also, the uncertainty of not knowing if you're going to- Will gonna... I have a family? Right, will I'm I be able to get pregnant? all this work into it, yep. and these treatments and the hormones, is it even going to work out yeah. for me? Am I going to be able to get and that family? Am I going to be able to have a family? Of? And so that was, took a very emotional toll on me. Was the doctor ever able to sort of tell you why you were struggling? So in my, my journey to have a family, um, nothing, they could never diagnose anything. Um, and I think that is actually one of the most common reasons. Is there anything that, any advice you can give to anyone out there who's dealing with it? And I, I think even as a physician and knowing the medicine behind early pregnancy loss, I still internalized it, yeah. and you really put a lot of pressure on yourself and your body and go through you know, the motions of, 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 of trying to figure out what it was that went wrong. But it's so important for women to understand that the most common reason for an early pregnancy loss in the first trimester is chromosomal abnormalities. Mm -hmm. So genetically, the baby just wasn't sound. Wasn't ready. And it wasn't ready. Mm -hmm. And you know, it's, it's not, it, this is not meant to be. And it will happen, you know, just keep, mm -hmm. have a positive emotion about it and try your best not to blame yourself. Infertility, it's so common, people need to realize that if they're, right after people get married or if they're working on their second child, to maybe be a little sensitive about yeah. that. Maybe we should have a little bite to eat because yeah, our topics are going to get us up. <laughs> when we come back, more of my conversation with Katie and Allison. <laughs> Miscarriages. I've unfortunately had too many people. I, I'm lucky, but it doesn't make it. Whoa! Aww. Sorry, because it, it just happened to a friend of mine. So. Right. It's hard, yeah. And just to see how they suffer from it physically is crazy. It's and you know what it is too, even when it's somebody else, you imagine, because you can be in that place and think, 
God forbid that happens. Yeah. So what happens? Even when you go through it yourself and you hear, like, you know, I had, gone, I had children earlier than Allison did, and I had obviously gone through a few miscarriages. And then when Allison had her miscarriage, it was the same emotion. You just yeah. feel so horrible for mm -hmm. that person, and you just want to make it better for them, and you just know how disappointing it is and how hard yeah. it is to get through it. For me, I had one miscarriage, and it was very disappointing because I was trying so hard so to get tired. pregnant, and There's then you so finally... Hope you get that positive pregnancy test that you've been working so hard and wanting so badly, and and when you lose it, it's devastating. So I yeah. think that that's really hard is when you put all that pressure yeah. on yourself I mean, that you did something hard on. Did you just start not telling people when you were? When I had that first miscarriage, I mean, I waited till I was well into that 12, first out of that first trimester before I was like very open and excited. So. Obviously, having a miscarriage is extremely emotional. Mm -hmm. But what were some of the physical side effects? You initially have the cramping and the bleeding, which is really hard. But then what I don't think people realize is uh, it takes a while for your body to get back to its natural cycle, and so you can start trying again. I was at the lowest I've ever been after having my daughter. Absolutely. Your Fend body has completely changed. Right. You're completely sleep deprived. Yeah. Right. Your hormones are crazy busy and suddenly you're fully responsible for the tiniest, most precious thing. And it's ever. it's hard. And it's yeah. hard. Yeah. And I think that, you know, you have this this image of motherhood being amazing and every mag every moment being magical, but it's not always that way. And you're no. gonna have a bad day and that's okay. And you're gonna have those moments when you're not feeling magical and you have spit up on you and you haven't slept in you know days and you haven't gotten out of your PJs and that's okay. But I think the important thing and the take home message is that there's help out there and that you don't have to suffer in silence. So now having been through everything that you've been through, how does that affect your parenting? As How do you feel now as yeah, a mom? Yeah, I mean, I have a crazy life. It's, it's <laughs> definitely a circus. Um, I can't sit here and say that having one-year-old twins and a four-year-old is not extremely stressful. Um, so it's, it's very easy to come home from a long day at work and your, t your toddlers are crying and your four-year-old is uh, having an accident and you know be overwhelmed and stressed with that. I work as well. We yeah. all work. Yeah. So it's hard to remember how hard. fortunate we are to like yep. look at that moment and not try to move past it, but yep. to stay in it is really hard. I felt very fortunate when I, I was able to have my children and look at them and you know it's, just, it's such a special time and it's a really special bond that you have and so it's really enjoyable and to be able to have that and you know not everybody gets that not everyone gets to go through yeah. IUI and IVF yeah. and it's not always successful so just being able to see your children and knowing that you know you were able to start a family is just beautiful. And that you're not beautiful. changing diapers anymore. And that, yeah. and that yes. the diaper phase is over. Very nice. That's nice. That's right. <laughs> Cheers. Cheers. Cheers ladies. For more information about EPL go to AmericanPregnancy.org and for more sisterly advice visit foreverfreckled.com. When we come back, we continue our discussion of early pregnancy loss. Stay with us. Being pregnant can be a joyous and exciting time in a woman's life. Hearing your baby's heartbeat for the first time, picking out their name, designing the nursery, and even planning their future. It can also be very nerve-wracking. You want nothing more than to protect this new life you are creating. I'm a mother to two girls. Ariana is 11 years old and Victoria is 10 years old. Over the past couple of years, I've been kind of yearning to try again for possibly a little boy. When I found out I was pregnant, I was a little nervous because I'm a little bit older because I'm over 35, but I felt really positive about this pregnancy. At the nine week appointment, Dr. Cohen um, showed me the baby's heartbeat. So I was really excited about that. The same week I began spotting. The spotting started for about a day. It started to increase in intensity. I called Dr. Cohen's office and they told me to come in and they'll do an ultrasound courtesy to make sure that everything was okay. The ultrasound technician, I was asking her questions and she didn't want to answer any of the questions. She was telling me that I need to talk to the doctor. So they put me in the waiting room and I waited and I started really getting nervous about everything. And on my way back into the room, I saw my chart on the door and there was a little sticky note on it. And the sticky note said, she doesn't know yet. I immediately kind of already knew what was gonna happen and that they were gonna tell me that I miscarried. And at that point, I, I had a lot of emotions. I didn't know 
what to think, but I knew whatever it was the doctor was gonna tell me, it, it couldn't have been good. Early pregnancy loss, or EPL, can be heartbreaking and can affect a woman not only emotionally, but physically as well. After finding out that she had miscarried, Carlin was given three options. Watch and wait, which allows the miscarriage to happen on its own. Take medication, which allows the miscarriage to happen sooner. Or have a DNC performed, which allows the doctor to remove the pregnancy. After being given the three choices, I wasn't sure what I wanted to do, so I told the doctor that I was going to go home and do some research to figure out which option would work best for me. I didn't understand why this happened or how something like this could happen. I asked the doctor, and the doctor informed me that these things can happen and that miscarriage, uh, especially in the first trimester, is common. Pregnancy loss is defined as loss during the first 13 weeks of pregnancy. It can be either intentional or unintentional. There are many causes of unintentional early pregnancy loss. Around 50% of the time, it's due to chromosomal, whether it be microdeletions, deletions, or an unexplained chromosomal anomaly that may occur. There's maternal indications, whether there is hormonal infection or there's an underlying autoimmune disorder within the patient. And also, we have our alcohol abuse, drug abuse, excessive caffeine intake, smoking, malnutrition, improper or abnormal implantation of the fetus, and also advanced maternal age. Before I could make a decision, my body kind of made that decision for me. After a few days, I started to bleed very heavily and I was passing clots and I was in a lot of pain. The cramping and the bleeding was so severe. In the middle of the night, I felt a very full feeling, like a lot of pressure, and I ran to the bathroom. Stepped inside of the bathtub, and all of the blood just started coming out. Some of the physical effects that are associated with early pregnancy loss include moderate to severe cramping, bleeding, rarely fever. A patient may continue to bleed within 48 hours or 72 hours after a loss. If a patient continues to bleed where she's going through, as I tell them, a pad an hour, it is important that they seek care either by their healthcare professional or to an emergency room. It's important to educate your patients and to let them know if the bleeding persists and it's hard for them to even get up and walk to the bathroom because of dizziness or they feel like they're gonna faint. These are signs and symptoms that the patients may be having an increased amount of blood loss and they need care immediately. In our office, all our patients, when they come in with suspected or with early pregnancy loss, a hemoglobin is checked in our office. That tells us pretty much how much the patient has been bleeding or how much blood they've lost during this type of miscarriage. Now, why is that so important? Because we really don't want to send a patient home if her hemoglobin is low with the risk of possibly needing a blood transfusion or passing out while they're driving home or having an accident at home. It will also dictate our management at that time whether we need to do something immediately, whether it be in the office or in the hospital such as a DNC, or if the patient's blood volume is stable, we could send them home with medication. Dr. Cohen then asked me to come in for ultrasound. I was informed that I still had some tissue remaining, so then I was again given the same choice as to whether or not um, I wanted to take medication to help um, with passing the tissue, or if I wanted to have a DNC procedure completed to have the tissue removed. I decided to go with the medication. He prescribed me a tablet called Methogen. The Methogen tablet helped to slow down the bleeding and it also helped me to expel some of the tissue that I still had left inside of me. But in the end, I still ended up having to get a DNC procedure. Bleeding due to early pregnancy loss, or EPL, warrants expected management to avoid complications. Methogen, a uterotonic, along with another medication, mesoprostol, is commonly used for early pregnancy loss hemorrhage. Methogen tablets have a rapid onset of five to 10 minutes, is an appropriate first-line agent to manage early pregnancy loss hemorrhage. I was really excited about being a mom again. Uh, my girls wanted another little sister, uh, but I really, really wanted a little boy of my own. Um, but I will never know whether I was having a boy or a girl. One of the toughest things our patients will deal with is early pregnancy loss. Whether it be in the first trimester or the last trimester, a loss is a loss and it's to be dealt with that on an emotional level. It is up to us to help our patients get through these tough times 
not only physically, but also mentally. And even if you do go through something as terrible as a miscarriage as what I went through, if you want a baby, definitely go after your dream, go after what you want, because in the end, what you will gain is, is far more than what you lost. For more information on EPL, you can visit methrogen.com or just log on to accesshealth.tv. What is methrogen used for? Methrogen is used just after a baby is born to help deliver the placenta, also called the afterbirth. It is also used to help control bleeding and to improve muscle tone in the uterus after childbirth. Who should not take methrogen? If you suffer from hypertension, high blood pressure. If you experienced one of the common complications of pregnancy called toxemia, sharp rise in blood pressure, leakage of large amounts of the protein albumin into the urine, and swelling of the hands, feet, and face. If you are pregnant. If you are allergic to methogen. How should I take methogen? One tablet three or four times daily for a maximum of one week. What should I avoid while taking methogen? Grapefruit and grapefruit juice may interact with methogen and lead to unwanted side effects. Discuss the use of grapefruit products with your healthcare provider. What warnings should I know about methogen? Do not breastfeed within 12 hours after taking methogen. Methogen may pass into breast milk in small amounts and could affect a nursing baby. In some cases, you will need to use this medication for up to one week after your baby is born. You may need to use a breast pump to establish and maintain your milk flow until your treatment is finished. If you use a breast pump during this time, throw out any milk you collect. Inform your doctor if you have kidney or liver problems, since these conditions can adversely affect methogen activity. If you have a heart disease, coronary artery disease, smoke, are obese, have diabetes, or high cholesterol, you may be at a higher risk for methogen to cause narrowing of the arteries, which may lead to a heart attack. What other medications might interact with methogen? There are a number of drugs affected by or will affect the way methogen works. Tell your doctor about all medicines you use, including prescription, over-the-counter, vitamins, and herbal products. What are the possible side effects of methogen? The most common side effect is high blood pressure associated with seizure and or headache. Other possible side effects include low blood pressure, stomach pain caused by uterine cramps, nausea, and vomiting. Tell your doctor if any of these symptoms are severe or do not go away. Call your doctor immediately if you experience seizures, chest pain or discomfort, slow or fast heartbeat, difficulty breathing, dizziness, swelling of the foot or leg, skin rash, swelling of the eyelids or around the eyes, face, lips, or tongue. These are not all possible side effects of methogen and others may occur. If you notice other effects not listed above, contact your doctor or pharmacist. You may report side effects to the FDA at www.fda.gov forward slash medwatch or call 1-800-FDA-1088 or contact Lupin Pharmaceuticals, Inc. at 1-800-399-2561. For more complete information about methogen and your specific health needs, talk with your doctor or pharmacist. FDA-approved labeling can be found at www.methogen.com. I want to thank Katie and Allison for their honest discussion today, and we also want to thank Carlin for sharing her personal story, and of course, Dr. Cohen for his expertise and knowledge. For more information on any of the topics we discussed today, you can go to accesshealth.tv. See you next time. <laughs>